Big one. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and call to order the special. This is a special council meeting, but it's actually a special 2012 meeting, which is a committee of the whole of the council. Uh, just a couple of reminders. If you have a cell phone or a pager, if you please either turn that off or put in the vibrate mode, we'd certainly appreciate it. If you do need to take a phone, uh, phone call, we would ask that you step outside in the hall. Uh, we have an agenda here. There's two items on the agenda. Just a reminder, this is considered a special meeting, a uh, special council meeting, so therefore we cannot add any additional items to the agenda. The two items, number one, the City Council's 2012 subcommittee recommendations for the additional five-year plan, and number two, direction to ask staff to draft a resolution. If you do wish to speak tonight, we do have speaker request forms. They look like this. They're to your left, our right. We would ask that you fill that out, put your name on that, and just hand it down to Charlene. Charlene, please wave like Vanna. Thank you. Uh, that way, as uh, your items come up, uh, Mr. Kroger, who is the president of the city council, will recognize you. First thing, as always, is the roll call and determination of the quorum. Charlene, if you would, please. Peterson. Here. Weifenbach. Here. Davis. Here. Hadcock. Here. Kroger. Here. Costello. Here. Quaker. Here. Wah. Here. Brown, Here. Mason, Here. we have quorum. Thank you, everyone. Now, at this point, the 2012 committee is the committee of the council. So at this point, I will be turning the meeting over to Ron Kroger, who is the president of the council, who will be running the meeting for the remainder of the night. With that, President Kroger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the mayor stated, the only, there's only one item on the agenda here, really, and that is the discussion of the recommendation from the subcommittee for the 2012 and first of all, uh, as you can see on September 7th, uh, the city council approved uh, the seven projects there uh, to the 2012 plan. And uh, the recommendation that's coming forward uh, from the subcommittee is the following six items. And I think what we're going to do this evening is we're going to take these uh, one by one uh, for, for discussion. And uh, the first one is going to be uh, the energy plant, which is a funding of $3.5 million. So if we could start out with a motion on the floor, uh, then we can go to discussion. Move to approve funding to approve adding the energy plant. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the energy plant uh, to the 2012 plan. Uh, discussion on that motion. We do have some speaker request forms, and I'm going to go to those first, and hopefully these are the ones that uh, everyone wanted to speak to, but I do have Patty Martinson. Patty, did you want to talk to item number one? Patty, we're going to give everyone three minutes yeah. as normal here, so go ahead and start you Won't out. Won't take long. My name is Patty Martinson, and um, I'll be speaking on behalf of the Adult Resource Center, which is one of the projects was not recommended by the Committee for Funding. And I would like to request that the Council reinstate that project in their list of recommendation to be approved. Um, I had a personal interest in this with experiences of my grandmother, who unfortunately passed away last week. So I am more dedicated than ever than seeing this uh, facility built because the need is there, it's proven to be um, viable, it's good for the community, good for the nonprofits, and good for the citizens um, of the city of Rapid City. Please uh, re add the uh, Adult Resource Center to the list of recommendation projects for funding. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Uh, next speaker request form is from Lynn Van Wald. My name is Lynn Von Wald. One of my duties at the Daisy House is to work with the caregivers of Rapid City. I'm speaking for those caregivers as well as the care receivers who aren't able to be here this evening to tell you their story. Currently, the United States has 16 million people suffering from de dementia. By the year 2050, we will have 50 million people suffering from dementia. <coughs> Dementia presents a crisis that doesn't affect just one person, but the entire extended family. Usually one caregiver will arise out of that extended family. Freedom becomes very, very limited. 
because someone must be with that person 24 hours a day, night and day. Until the Daisy House Adult Day Center opened its doors four years ago, no alternative but home care or nursing home care existed. Today's nursing home costs are between $40,000 and $50,000 a year. That is a dawning figure for Rapid City's families. Most of the time, institutionalization is not a possibility. Dementia could span 10 to 20 years. Dementia can be diagnosed as early as a person's 40s or 50s. We are facing a perfect storm, not only in the United States, but in Rapid City. This is a dire need. Today's reality is that most of us in this room will be a caregiver or a care receiver sometime in our lifetime. By building the Adult Resource and Social Center, Rapid City will be able to address this crisis proactively. We will be able to provide a facility that includes a family with dementia. The entire family will be able to experience that welcome break from 24-7 care needs. I ask that the City Council please affirm the recommendation of the two citizen committees by providing 2012 funds to help build the Adult Social and Resource Center. Thank you, Lynn. The next speaker request form is from uh, Marshall Mayer. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Marsha Mayer, Community Resource Coordinator for the MEALS Program. As Marsha Murray Project Director stated at previous meetings, the MEALS Program's interest and the Adult Activity Center is to share operating costs and resources with other organizations which allow us to use more funds for direct services. We also support a one-stop central facility for seniors. As evidenced by the growth in programs at the Activity Center in Sioux Falls, a facility of this type will bring more people into the program where <coughs> there is a greater variety of things to do that improves their quality of life. With their sheer numbers and diverse lifestyles, the Boomers offer an unprecedented opportunity to reshape the image of today's seniors into a dynamic, accessible, appealing community resource. Programming needs to change with the generations offering a diverse mix of activities that appeal to younger and older seniors, men and women. One out of nine seniors in the United States goes hungry every day. This is an investment in keeping people healthy through good nutrition, exercise, and socialization, re reduces health care costs, and saves the government money. Healthy seniors are able to remain in their homes longer, thereby paying taxes for a longer period. As we enter into the second decade of the 21st century, the time has come and is perhaps long overdue to give back to our older adults and to show them in a meaningful, tangible fashion our gratitude for their contribution to society. Sioux Falls has their Active Generation Center for 13 years. We believe that this is the time Rapid City get on board and put Rapid Seniors first. After all, the seniors are the backbones of our community. Without them, we would not have the 2012 plan that they voted in 30 years ago. They have sacrificed so much and given so much to this community. We urge the City Council to reconsider your decision to exclude the Adult Activity Center and move the project forward as the Citizens Re Committee recommends. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you. Next speaker request for us from Shirley Allen. My name is Shirley Allen, and I am the manager of Daisy House Adult Day Center. It saddened me to hear that we were left off of the list of the 2012 projects. I deal with families daily, with situations just like what you have heard. One of you said in the last meeting that our seniors are certainly our silent majority. We need to listen to them now. I can give you statistics on what happens but you've seen those in your book that we gave you. I do not need to do that. But we do not need to hide our head 
in the sand like an ostrich and think this is going to go away because we were not on the project list. I am also one of those baby boomers who moved to Rapid City. But you know what? My concern is for five years and ten years, what is going to happen to this, these people if we do not act now? I am not tied to any senior center. This project is not about one senior center versus another. It's not about one agency versus another. It's an, about us combining together. We need to be proactive beyond the current centers and senior assistant agencies scattered around our town. Put yourselves in the shoes of a lady that I just met with last week. She has macular degeneration. She cannot drive. Her husband has Alzheimer's. He doesn't remember how to drive. All I want is just a break a couple times a week, she said. I'd love to go back to my senior center. I'd love to exercise, or guess what? I'd like to take a nap, but I can't. Do any of you on this board like to step up and help her out? We do. We are the facility that would like to reach the families with all needs and desires. Please, the severity of our problem is now. I am asking you to reconsider the value of the Adult Resource Center. I, too, am speaking for the silent majority. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Next speaker uh, is Kim. Is it Hewer? Hi, my name is Kim Hewer. I have my daughter, Laura. What some people are seem to be missing with Daisy House is Daisy House does more than just the elderly. I am a sandwich generation. I have a daughter who is now 17. She has been going to Daisy House for four years. The state of South Dakota has a loophole. After the age of 12, there is nobody to care for our children that have special needs until they are 21 and can go to Black Hills Workshop. Daisy House takes my daughter. They do living skills with her. She makes snacks for the elderly. She serves them. I also have a daughter, a dad who is 73 on a second pacemaker, had a stroke last year. We moved him up here two years ago so that I could help take care for them. I have to work full time. I cannot do this on my own. I have to have a resource center for not only my daughter, but for my father. I also have a mom who has heart condition. I am the sole person here to take care of them and work full time. I need the help that Daisy House provides. I need them to give my daughter living skills that the school does not provide. My daughter interacts with the elderly. The elderly can read to my daughter. My daughter reads on a first grade level. So if there's a book she wants to read, she can't read it. However, a lot of the elderly can still read and provide for her. It is a unique, one of a kind in this state facility that does both the kids and the elderly. We have 22 young adults that go and get services at Daisy House, learns how to cook, learns how to take care of themselves, is compassionate, can paint the fingernails of the elderly ladies. They're there to help them. It is a very unique situation between the elderly and the young that no other place in the state has. Please reconsider this. Thank you, Kim. Next speaker re request is from Rocky Murphy. Hi, my name is Rocky Murphy, and I'm also the parent of um, someone who gets care at the Daisy House. Some of you probably saw my daughter. She was waving at everyone when, when they walked in the room. She's 21 years old, and she gets services from the Daisy House, and she's been getting services there since she was 17 when the Daisy House first opened. And I have been so very, very grateful for the Daisy House. Um, Kim is right. There is that loophole. It's very difficult to get care for someone in that 12 to 21-year-old age range. Uh, I, I also work full-time. I've been a single mom most of my life, and the Daisy House has taken care of Hannah during the summer, during Christmas break when, the, when, the, when school wasn't in session and there was no one to watch her. Um, they have just been a wonderful, wonderful facility, and 
I would hope that even if you would not approve, which I hope you do, the adult resource facility, that some of you would come and take a, a tour of, of the Daisy House. They'd be, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to show you around, introduce you to some of the people there. They do just an absolutely wonderful job. And as I look up on the screen at all the other projects that are funded, they're, they're all worthy projects or they wouldn't have made it this far. But as far as I can tell, and I don't know the ins and outs of all the projects, the Daisy House is the one with the more far-reaching vision. The Daisy House can still be around 50 years from now to help your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, help their families with, with the kinds of services that they would need. Um, I know Hannah's been very grateful for the Daisy House. I've been very grateful for it, and I would urge you to reconsider funding for it. Um, I'm here to speak on, on behalf of not only my daughter, but advocate on behalf of all the other ones whose needs they can't tell for themselves. So I, I would urge you to rethink that. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Uh, next request is from Joanne Sutton. Joanne. Thank you, council people, for allowing me to speak. I am the face behind that voice that you heard on, during our telephone conversation this past week. And thank you for listening to our thoughts regarding the Adult Resource Center. You've heard Patty asking for additional support, renewed support for the Adult Resource Center. You've heard Lynn speak to the need for a more and better facility to serve those people who cannot speak for themselves. Marcia is concerned for a facility where we can feed all the people who need and want and qualify for the meals program. Shirley is emotionally involved with these people who need help to care for those who cannot care for themselves. And I think you would have gathered from their talks that they don't have room. They're running out of room for these people. The Adult Resource Center can be that mutual space for providing the care that is very essential and at the same time provide a wonderfully relaxed atmosphere with a lot of different activities that all can be involved in. This center is completely inclusive. This is not, this is a citywide project. We're not thinking just of senior citizens like me, I'm 76 years old. We are encouraging a new movement to provide for that vast number of baby boomer population who will be looking for a facility for active generations. This is a project that can help Rapid City shine. Thank you for allowing me to speak. We appreciate it. Thank you, Joanne. Okay, the motion on the floor is to uh, approve uh, the energy plant discussion from the council or the committee. Jordan Mason. Thank you. Uh, with regards to the uh, energy plant, um, one of the things that I would like to uh, at least uh, bring up for discussion uh, for the council is after looking at this issue, and this, uh, this issue is something that may fall under the context of a much bigger policy discussion, but um, I would like to open up the discussion about possibly planning ahead for the future replacement <coughs> even after this time, given that the facility that we will be building will have a shelf life. Um, there is a end limit. So I, I guess I would like to look at um, what sort of options we have and if it is possible to include any sort of stipulations on the long-term planning for this um, with giving the money currently. It's, you know, maybe stipulating that we would like to see some sort of plan to set aside money for the future. Um, and with that, I'll yield to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Further discussion from uh, the committee? We'll go to Bonnie Peterson. Thank you. Um, yes, I agree with uh, Alderman Mason that 
we need to plan ahead. Um, this was not discussed in the budget meetings. And uh, unfortunately, then we have the scenario of the energy plant coming up. And um, I know that with the expansion of the um, high school, we could say we didn't know it, but at the same time, it's over 30 years old. So there was no excuse not to know that it was going to need to be replaced at some point. I, um, it just puts us in a, a real tough situation because it's a need, but then also the adult uh, resource center is also a need. And so I would just like to hear some other people's ideas of how we could get uh, creative to um, make this all work. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Further discussion? Sam, your light was on. Did you remove it? Or did you want to speak? Okay, is there any other discussion? Aaron Costello. Thank you, President Kroger. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think the best thing that could come out of the situation with the energy plan is exactly what Jordan said. Uh, I'm not sure this is the best place to nail out that conversation, <clears throat> excuse me, because it seems like a conversation needs to be all encompassing and include all the city buildings um, and not one, not necessarily one fund per building, but perhaps uh, one general fund with which we. Um, set aside and make sure that it's used strictly for, for applications like this so as we don't negatively affect uh, something like, like 2012 um, with projects that it seems we should have had the foresight to prepare and uh, set aside a fund to at least partially cover. Um, but in light of that, I, I'm not sure that that's a conversation that would be uh, best had right now, um, but I too will uh, yield to the floor. We'll go to Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If if the City Council chooses to proceed with the three and a half million dollars of funding tonight for the for the energy plant, uh, what we've in essence done is uh, is award uh, poor planning, and uh, I think that. Um, you know, while Alderman Mason and Costello's suggestion is a good one, the the culture uh, uh, seems to be as such that if we just come and ask uh, the city council at the last minute of the 2012 process and and lobby enough people, we can get the money that we want, and and uh, uh, and other projects that had the full endorsement throughout the committee process are are. Um, out of left on the sidelines, and I think that's a poor way to do business. I think that we we could, if we wanted to, say no tonight, or at least delay the yes by uh, asking the Civic Center to fully research other options. If we say yes tonight, then they're off the hook, and it will be years again before um, before the discussion. Uh, uh, comes up again relating to energy plant needs and uh, the whole discussion will probably be forgotten unless the council chooses uh, to use this opportunity tonight to hold the Civic Center accountable and ask for uh, an alternative uh, plan. So uh, what I would like to do to uh, help force this discussion along uh, to what I believe will be uh, a good conclusion of asking the Civic Center to research other uh, uh, other options is I would like to offer a uh, substitute motion to uh, dedicate this uh, three and a half million dollars to the uh, adult uh, uh, resource center and if I can get a second to the motion then that will force some good debate on this topic thank you okay we have a substitute motion and a second to uh, not fund the energy plant but 
on the Adult Aging Center. Discussion on that motion, Mayor Hanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I guess I would have a little bit of concern of basically pitting two projects against each other because that's exactly what this motion does. It's unfortunate that we would do that. Quite honestly, every, every project that is brought forward in 2012 has merit to it. Um, you could have just as easily picked any one of the other projects to talk about. Um, my question is why would you single out the Civic Center? Why not talk about the ASA softball fields that, which were added to this project? Why not talk about um, why not talk about the terminal expansion, which was approved? Why not talk about the dam at Canyon Lake, which was approved for this project? Having said that, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could just have a minute or two, there's been some discussion as far as how we got to this point, and it's a fair question. It really is. And I put together a timeline, and everyone should have it in front of you, and if, if I could just have a couple minutes, I'd like to run through that timeline because I, there seems to be the impression uh, by some of the council members that somehow this snuck up on us and, you know, we just we had no idea that this was coming. And the second question was, was should we ask the Civic Center to look at any and all opportunities to go out and fund this? We've asked the question, quite honestly. That's why the Civic Center was told to come and apply to 2012. They came and they applied to the 2012 uh, program just like every other project out there. This, this shouldn't have been a surprise. They came, they pitched it, it was part of the process. With, with your concurrence, I'd like to go, and I will, I will go through this very quickly through, this, through the timeline. If, go Brad, ahead, could you Mayor, please I'd bring like that up? That. And if you could advance it to the first slide, please. Because I think it's important. Brad, can you advance it? Or, there we go. Very quickly, timeline, because there, there's been some reference saying that, you know, geez, I should have known about this. Well, first of all, I went to legislature in 2004. I was gone in 2005 when the, when the Civic Center Ice Arena was, uh, project was approved. In 2006, uh, there was a discussion and a report. Alderman Quaker referred to it at one of our council meetings uh, that the Civic Center uh, had no impact, or the new ice arena had no impact uh, to the energy plant. And matter of fact, I also included those minutes uh, in there. And uh, uh, Brian Maliski very clearly indicates that the building uh, was originally, you know, was 29 years old at the time, and as time goes on, especially the cooling side, will need to be looked at in conjunction with central expansion. Well, at that point, there was, there was no discussion of central expanding at that point. Uh, there again, July of uh, 2007, uh, I became uh, mayor. 2007 in November, Gunnar approached the public works director, who was Dirk at the time, and me, uh, had concerns about the age of the equipment, requested to carry money forward into 2008, which council did. Can you go to the next slide, please, Roy? I'm going to go through this very quick. Uh, 2008, Mayor Hanks and Public Works Director Dirk Jablonski who went to D.C. to look for possible grants, were told by the congressional delegation the city needs a study. So in 2008, in July, the city council unanimously approved to hire a consultant to go in and take a look at the needs. Uh, the Civic Center was at the time just under 400,000 square feet. It did not include the, the ice arena because, there again, there was no impact to the energy plant. It included only 290,000 square feet of Central High School because we did not know about the 210,000 square foot expansion. Next slide, please. Uh, there again, July of 2000, or January of 2009, the city received uh, the first study. There again, without the, without the school expansion, we didn't know about that. Uh, 2009, January, uh, the mayor and Robert Ellis traveled to D.C. requesting funding. In June of 2009, city council approved an amendment to the Stanley Consultant to, to, to take a look at the Central High School's expansion. There again, that was the first time that we started hearing about this. In September of 2009, the schools voted to move forward with Phase 1. That's the first time that they made a decision of whether or not to build a new high school or to expand Central High School. So in September of 2009, that was really the first indication that Central High School was going to expand. October 2009, they voted to uh, go ahead and move forward to Phase 2, which is another 36,000 square feet. November of 2009, the mayor notifies the schools. Uh, the state uh, law pertaining to the use of designated park was an issue. We dealt with that issue. Next slide, please. Uh, February of 2010, Mayor and Public Works uh, Director Robert Ellis go to D.C. to request funding. April of 2010, the city receives the updated report from Stanley that indicates that the new proposed 210,000 square foot expansion of Central High School will exceed the abilities of the energy plant. April of 2010, Mayor calls an emergency meeting with the schools to discuss the findings of the Stanley report. And there again the same month, Mayor instructs Brian Maliski to request 2012 money. We've been dealing with this for three years. Um, there's there have been discussion, discussion for over five years on this. I, I understand the consternation that it, it's not a fun project. The reality of it is it's a needed project. Um, we're to the point of 
we either move forward with this project or we're going to be faced with trying to come up, and quite honestly, I don't have the answer where you come up with additional funding. Uh, there again, we asked the question of the Civic Center, is there any, any possibility you can come up with additional funding? Well, the opportunities are pretty limited. About the only, the only uh, option they have is to try and raise rates. Those of you that have been on the council for a couple of years remember what happened last time the Civic Center raised rates. Boy, they about, I mean, we just about got hung by all the nonprofits out there uh, because we actually raised the rates. Please keep in mind about two-thirds of the events at the Civic Center are events held by nonprofits, which means we lose money on them. And so with that, I would stand by uh, for any questions. I promised I'd keep it very brief. But there again, to answer some of your questions, <laughs> did we ask the question, are there any possible other funding sources uh, that the Civic Center could help pay for this? The reality of it is you also have in your sheet, they've spent over $7 million in the last year or two as far as infrastructure improvements at the Civic Center between the ice arena, roofs, uh, LaCroix Hall. Quite honestly, they're pretty much tapped out. Now, having said that, it's also probably a fair statement. If we would have known that we were going to have to expand uh, the energy plant three or four years ago, there may have been the possibility of using some of that money that we used for improvements at the Civic Center. We didn't know about it. The board didn't know about it. The council didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. In retrospect, could we have done it only if we would have known? And the schools made that final determination uh, there again in the fall of 2009. Thank you. I'd stand by for any questions. Thank you, Mayor. We'll go to Jordan Mason. Thank you. Um, question for the Mayor, if I may. Um, Mr. Hanks, uh, I have a sheet in front of me from November 27th, 2006, and uh, at the bottom of this sheet it reads, uh, this will need to be looked at in conjunction with the Central High School. It goes on to say that Alderman Quaker indicated there was no contingency. Uh, you just previously said that in fall 2009 was the first time that we heard about that. Uh, can you give me a little clarification on what was being discussed then in sure. this context? Sure. You misread that. What it says, originally designed in 2007, the Civic Center Arena did not have air conditioning. It was added later. As time goes on, especially from the cooling side, this will need to be looked at in conjunction with Central High School. Uh, Vulcan, responding to a question from Alderman Quaker, indicated there is no contingency to do that. At that point, there was no discussion because it was still in the community, especially on the school board, there, there was uh, pretty distinct uh, discussions of whether they were going to build a third high school versus expanding Central High School. That determination wasn't made until the fall of 2009. Thank you, Ms. Tranks. And I'm also curious, um, Mayor, of do we have a contingency now moving forward with providing this three and a half million? Do we have a contingency or a way to set up a contingency for the foreseeable future based on the shelf life of this machinery? There again, th Mr. Chairman, if I can, that's a very good question. The reality of it is the Civic Center does put, around, put away about three to four hundred thousand dollars a year for capital improvements. They typically don't have the capacity to go out and do major upgrades like this. And it's sort of a philosophical question because what will happen is if the Civic, Civic Center indeed raises its rates and starts accumulating money and putting it into reserves, you're going to start getting an awful lot of questions why the Civic Center has two, three, four million dollars sitting in reserves. Now I know there's a couple of council members that used to sit on the Civic Center board and they could probably, uh, probably answer that question as well as I can. Uh, matter of fact, one, two, three, there's been at least three of you that have served on the Civic Center board. If we start having three or four million dollars sitting in an enterprise fund like the Civic Center, uh, a couple things will happen. Number one, uh, there will be a lot of questions in the community, why are you charging so much if you're accumulating money? And the second question, I hate to say this, is the fact that other people are going to be looking at spending it, whether it's the Civic Center or not. I have one uh, other uh, question, uh, Mayor. Uh, was the energy plant um, always under the Civic Center's domain, or was it that at some point under the public works? Up until recently, it was under public works. I believe it was in 2009 that we actually transferred the, the management or the responsibilities uh, from the public works over to the Civic Center. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I'm, uh, I guess where I'm at in looking at uh, the timeline uh, in conjunction in the context of what we're talking about, I guess I'm still um, stuck at the principle of what we're talking about here. I understand that uh, whether we knew about it in 2006 or 2009, the fact of the matter is today, right now, the city of Rapid City is facing $3.5 million that we need to look at on how to replace a critical uh, municipal facility. My issue is, is that common sense tells me that when I buy a car, of course I'm going to have budgeted in how to 
upkeep, the maintenance with oil changes, and to fill my gas tank. But I do set aside money to buy a new car 10 years from now. I don't buy a facility, and, and to make this analogous, I don't understand how we can say that we didn't see this coming. It, to me, you had an energy plant that absolutely had a shelf life from the get-go. I'm not saying whether it was at the start of it or whether it's today, but I do think that planning ahead for the future so we have at least some foresight while moving forward with the city, I, I think that's a good direction to go. And um, the other uh, area I'd like to touch on is uh, that I in, in no intention want to blame the Civic Center or this administration. This is, and as the mayor eloquently put, this is a philosophical standpoint of do we want to wait till the last minute to come up with large amounts of money to replace the facilities of this city, or do we want to be fiscally responsible and start setting aside small amounts so that when it does come to the future to you know, pass, that we are prepared for that future? Um, and that's, that's ultimately what I want to bring before this council is maybe that we start looking at the future beyond ourselves, beyond just this council, but 20, 30 years down the line, where do we want to leave our city? And that's the question that I would leave the rest of the council with. Thank you. Further discussion will go to Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I had a couple questions for Brian if he's here. I think I've seen him floating around somewhere. <coughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mike, I'm going to maybe preface this question because uh, uh, part of my concern is obviously originally without 2012 fund funding in the very beginning, the citizens of our community would have never enjoyed the Civic Center to the extent that it's enjoyed today. Uh, without the extension and massive discussions and and those types of things, the Civic Center's ice arena would never be uh, in the same position that it's in today. I find ourselves in a, in a peculiar situation um, with the energy plant, understanding that um, it's a three and a half million dollar project to bring it up to speed, and that's just the city's half. I hope that people understand that's just the city's half. The school district is required to pay the other half, and for for the sake of arguments, I think you could look at it and see what the state has been paying in the past or the, the school district has been paying in the past compared to what we, we've paid in the past. And it's probably been disproportionate them paying more than us as per square footage compared to what it is today. Uh, Three and a half million dollars is a lot of money at one time for, for any, any given purpose. Uh, I'm not interested in trading one project for another, but if had to be asked, I'd probably trade the senior center for the Canyon Lake Dam project, if anybody was so interested in that. We're going to do a little horse trading tonight. Um, I understand that the basic, the basic fundamental, what this comes down to tonight is this, is the energy plant has basically become obsolete. Uh, the funding source that we're looking at tonight is, is, is the 2012 um, funding sources. Uh, some of the things, Brian, I guess a question I would have for you is uh, some of the, the budget items in your budget that go back to the city that is generated from revenues, um, from entertainment, um, as the mayor mentioned earlier, um, nonprofits renting spaces, uh, those types of things. There's charges that the city charges you directly back. I looked back in 2006, and I think interdepartmental charges in 2006 were $75,000. Today, if my, note, if my memory serves me right, $285,000. So in a, in a four year, five year window, went from 75,000 to 285,000. But my understanding is that's not the only revenue that the city, Civic Center is charged for in reference to the revenues that they produce. So I'm just trying to make the public understand that there is things that the Civic Center and is there a way that you have those numbers by chance, Brian, that are other than the interdepartmental charges? 
I have some of them. I, I just certainly don't have all of them. I mean, you wouldn't mind, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. I should direct those questions through you. If you wouldn't mind asking Brian that, that if he could give us the numbers that he has with the Civic Center pays back to the city that goes into the city's general fund. Thank you. Brian, would you answer his question? Y yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, the number that I have for the interdepartmental charges for 09 is actually 200, about $271,000. Um, we also pay for our own insurances, which is done through the city. The city has an umbrella policy in which we pay into, and we paid about $301,000 last year into, and this is 09 numbers, that we paid into the city for our insurances. Uh, we pay the city uh, $145,000 in uh, property taxes for the uh, Civic Center. Uh, then, and, and I don't know how this flows through, but we just paid off the food court addition uh, last year, and we paid five hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And I believe that went back to back to the city. I'm not exactly sure how that worked to CIP. It went to CIP um, last year, and then this year, um, actually starting in two thousand and nine, the um, uh, Rushmore Plaza Civic Center bonded for $5 million to make added improvements and needed improvements to the city or to the Civic Center, uh, which we started making payments. So in 2009, we made a $412,000 payment, uh, which will become, I believe, $415,000 this year. Now, that's in addition to the $300,000 that's just solely for capital improvements. It does, does not go to the city, but that $5 million uh, as an example that, that the board uh, bonded for, uh, we spent um, $200,000 in HVAC, we spent about a half a million dollars in roofs. The theater ADA uh, improvements and upgrades were about $1.6 million. Uh, we had a life safety uh, paging system that's interconnected with our um, interconnected with our fire alarm system, we spent about 160,000 on uh, the parking lots. Um, it was deemed that we needed more parking when the ice arena was opened, and I would agree with that. Uh, we spent 1.7 million dollars in parking lots, security systems, and gating systems for that. Uh, this year, we are scheduled uh, between now and May. Uh, we are scheduled to spend about 800,000 dollars for LaCroix Hall. It sits essentially the way it sat in 1977, although the carpet was replaced in 1994. So that's the five million. But um, going back to your original questions, um, we spent uh, those monies that, um, f for services that the city provides for us. Did that answer your question, Ron? Yeah, that, that answered. A majority of my question and the reason I sat on the on the Civic Center parking lot committee when we were looking at expanding the parking lot there and one of the things that we found in the public eye that was very important was that we didn't charge anybody to park there and to this day I'll, I'll, I'll still say that's the best thing that the city could do I mean obviously the, the nice thing about the C Civic Center is it allows family fun I don't think there's probably anybody sitting in this room who hasn't had the opportunity to enjoy what someone's vision did when in 70, I believe it was 72 or 74, That's built true. that Civic Center and uh, uh, the families have enjoyed since then and continue to enjoy at, at a fairly decent price. I know I've been to other locations where you, you pay more prices for tickets. Uh, I think it was, was it Saturday night they had the, um, the ice, ice dancers here. What yeah, a wonder, I didn't get an opportunity to go and I think my, and luckily, I'm still married after that situation. But it, uh, those things it, that it they was can fantastic. bring was it? Yeah, I bet it was. And thanks. And I hope my wife's not watching tonight. So um, the, those those opportunities. And one of the, one thing that happens with those opportunities is, is is keeping the price down, and that's affordable as as best affordable for families as possible. I know that in, in talking to the owners of, of, of the uh, hockey team, that's one thing they've striven to do, and I think that's part of their success. Uh, part of the Civic Center's success is part of the, the ability to try to control the costs. And understanding that, that this $3.5 million 
it, it could simply have looked at it and have thought about, well, how about we do this and we just raise the ticket prices across the board and bond for this. I think that's an option. Um, and it's not a, it's not a, in my mind, it's probably not the best option. Um, when we look at this, I, I can live with doing, you know, funding this thing through 2012 and the understanding that there is, that, that Civic Center, I can imagine being built back in the 70s, you know, in the, the arenas, the Barnett Arena and those things, we're looking at a, at a major conversation that's going to have to take place at some point in time, how, how that thing's going to be funded and how we're going to, we, how are we going to continue to enjoy it going into the future and moving into the future. So I don't think that these conversations are over. I don't always agree sometimes of how they come about, but I am here to, tonight. To, I, I am saying that I am going to support uh, the funding for this project under the circumstances of, of looking at the options. I don't see a lot of other options at this point. I think that uh, the, the, the expansion at, at high school is done. Those people are going to need their heat and airing, air conditioning. It's, it's, um, you know, like I said, I don't agree with sometimes I'll, how they always unfold, but I can agree on this may be at this point um, maybe the, the best opportunity to, to fund it. So thank you. And thanks for your information, Bill. We'll go to Deb Hadcock. Thank you, Ron Kroger. Just a couple of things. Um, I know uh, this, is, this is a 34-year-old issue for the um, energy plant. It was built in 1976. I think we all know that. Um, there's a couple of things that were said on this issue, and I think the bottom line for me is taxpayer dollars. Either way, you're spending taxpayer dollars to upgrade that uh, Civic Center energy plant, and it was best said by Mr. Kroger. Um, it's taxpayer dollars either way. Um, are you willing to pay interest in, on bonding and different issues, or are you willing to put 3.5, and the bottom line is cost taxpayer dollars less money. So um, foresight, um, putting away money, um, you better look at the projects, guys, because after listening to that, I had to ask myself the same thing. We have a leisure pool at Horseman Par Park that we should have had foresight maybe 20 years ago to start putting away money for a, uh, a pool that's been having a river run down the street. Um, we have a Candy Lake Dam that we knew needed to be reconstructed that we've been trying to get money for. So even though I want to make somebody accountable, Brian, <laughs> um, I have to take a good look at myself and others on some of these projects. And no, sometimes you get madder than heck because you want to, the committee did their process and you agreed with them, and I did. And then I started looking at myself and the projects that we did, and we could have been a little bit more foresight on, and we could put money away, but I guess the bottom line is, is 2012, once we had the discussion, and I'm glad we had that discussion, it comes down to 2012 was the foresight. If you look at these projects and a lot of these projects, um, how many people came up with lots of money for their projects that they wanted to have done? Did they, you know, we have softball, we have terminal expansion, that's federal dollars. Uh, Main Street Square came up with some. Um, Skyline Wilderness. I mean, some of the projects that we think are important, we did not come up with foresight and money for those as well. We just think they're good projects. In this case, it's a have to in the Civic Center. Um, I, I did myself a little bit of the blame game, but again, I, I want you to be accountable. I want you to do the have to projects. But sometimes the citizens of Rapid City and the taxpayers, um, you have to agree with them first. And then you come back and go, wow, um, we probably could have got away with this for another couple years, but right now we need $3.5 million because Central High School is upgrading and doing their process. So um, I don't think anything snuck up on us. I think we knew this in a sense. Do I think uh, we knew we had to use 2012 for the future of uh, this energy plant? Um, don't kid yourself. I think we, we knew in the end. Uh, some people did. And bottom line is, again, taxpayer dollars. Um, unless somebody has a better funding source and a better way of doing this without raising rates at the Civic Center, without um, bonding for more interest to the taxpayers, um, show me a different way. 
I ask, I ask the questions on funding sources, and if you have that answer tonight, then take this off the table and, and, and bring that forth, because obviously they didn't. You can go back and tell them to do that, but it's not going to happen. They're, they came here for that answer tonight. They don't have the money. So we can raise the parking fees, which we had talked about before. We can do all kinds of stuff, but that puts the burden upon the taxpayer that goes to the Civic Center. And if you feel that's, the, that's necessary and the need uh, to plan for the future of the Civic Center, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you, um, again, this council needs to do the same, and we need to look ourselves in the mirror and say, on all these projects, what would, did we really plan ahead and do what we're telling everybody else to do? So. Um, that's all I have to say. Further comments, we'll go to Bonnie Peterson. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say a couple of more things. And one is that also I just want to make it very clear that I'm not blaming anybody for this. I'm just kind of expressing uh, uh, disappointment that because uh, I'm new in July. And so this was not discussed during the budget process. And now I'm sitting here going, well, are there other big ticket items that are going to need to be funded that we don't, you know, that I currently don't know about? And so that's a cause of concern. And I think uh, the point was uh, pointed out earlier that we do need to be setting aside more money to try to pay for some of these things because I know in my own home, I, I know eventually a roof has to be replaced or something, and I don't just... You know, I start putting money aside, um, and sometimes that's not easy to do, but you still try to work on doing that. Um, also, I'm not, um, I'm all for the Adult Resource Center, so I kind of popped in that I, so I'm willing, I'll do some more horse trading later. Um, because I know that we need this, the students of Rapid City, um, needs this and I just uh, hope that we can find some way to uh, fund the Adult Resource Center tonight. Thank you. <coughs> Further comments? Uh, we do have one more speaker request for him. That's from Dan Michael. Dan, do you want to speak on this issue? I'm uh, Dan Michael, 2846 Nugget Gulch. <clears throat> Before tonight's uh, meeting, I had never heard of Daisy House. Thank you for enlightening me. Second, um, Alderman Mason, I don't know of too many people that get the car bought for him by the taxpayers. And uh, as I look at our city being raised, lifelong resident of Rapid City, the improvements that have been made, and we look at a civic center that uh, was built 36 years ago, the company I work for put in the energy plant during the union days in Rapid City. It's a facility that is far outlived its lifetime. You talk about a motor, you're doggone lucky. You have a maintenance staff that uh, keeps that motor purring. I've been involved in projects on the, in the facility and on the grounds. But I think it's time to look at facilities like this, not only the energy plant, your wastewater treatment plant, your water treatment plant. These are not bronze plaque projects. These are not feel-good projects. I took off a list <coughs> off the internet of feel-good projects. Uh, Meadowbrook Golf Course, 1.2 million. Canyon Lake Restoration, 2.2. Um, Journey Museum, 12 point or 10.4 those are feel-good projects I hope you as a council would consider the 3 million visitors a year plus minus 
and the 300,000 student days at Central High School and the considerations. These are citizens and future taxpayers that pay a lot of that half penny. And I think this uh, project is a very worthwhile project. I disagree with what comments were made in the paper today. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry that that came out in the paper the way it did. It was finger pointing. And we all have fingers to point at each other, or point back at us, I guess I would say. And you never know. There might be a 10 cent stipend in one of these projects that go, could go toward funding a Daisy House or Daisy Center. I thank you again for your presentation tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, we do have one other speaker request for from Ron Sassel. Thank you for recognizing me. Um, as uh, a citizen who did put in a modest 2012 project, uh, this is something that was of interest to me as well. Um, there are so many worthy projects. Um, having gotten a copy of the budget uh, for 2011, one of the things that I went and looked at is that uh, for the Civic Center, for um, maintenance, uh, there was an 11% cut. And I think when we look at uh, funding moving forward, and as, as this has been brought up with, you know, in the discussion, you know, depreciation is something that we know happens. And having that foresight, and there again, this is an infrastructure project. I mean, that's part of what 2012 is for, for dealing with infrastructure. At the same time, there are also other projects that are out there. And, you know, Daisy House, they make, they make a great case. I've got to say, they make a phenomenal case for their, for their project. Um, you know, mine was killed because of uh, granite slippery, and even though the irony was that, uh, I think, on the, uh, the granite pavers, I think, drove up the cost on uh, the city square. But that's something else. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> no, I really, I really think, though, the council must look at what they're doing moving forward, starting to look at for each uh, really, I think for each building, looking at adding in a depreciation cost, um, and there again, it may not be something that can cover uh, th carry three and a half million. But even still, if we're looking at one and a half million um, it, instead of three and a half million, it would have been a very big difference, I think. And there still would have been some other worthy 2012 projects <laughs> getting funding. So. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. We'll go back to uh, the committee and Jordan Mason. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to clarify on a couple of points um, because uh, I, I feel pretty strongly the uh, water has gotten pretty muddied here along the way. Um, in no way am I um, trying to take away from the vision or the foresight of 2012, but I am talking about the difference and uh, between essential and non-essential functions in this city. Um, I think it's pretty clear that um, somebody made a comparison to the water treatment uh, plant. That's another great comparison of exactly what I'm talking about. When the lights go off and you don't have good drinking water, those are essential functions to our city. Now comparing that to something that is something that we all enjoy, but we could live without, there's a difference between essential and non-essential. What I'm talking about is the very backbone of the city in which we're built on. And what I'm really talking about is fiscal policy here. Um, this is what this boils down to is all I'm asking here is do we want to continue to bond a lot of these items or is it possible that we look at funding sources just as Alderwoman Hadcock brought forward and uh, talk about um, different ways that we could do this. Um, one thing that I would point out is that the energy plant as a, a specific example in the context of 
as uh, what Alderman Costello said may be a much larger discussion, uh, was transferred from the Public Works Department not very long ago to the Civic Center. So they've just um, obtained this responsibility in a lot of respects. I just want to clarify that I am not talking about um, trying to take away what 2012 has become. I agree that it's a great vision. What I am talking about is having some vision for the essential functions of this city and looking forward about how to plan ahead. And that includes the energy plant, the water treatment facilities, um, things that this city needs to run on. And uh, with that, I'll yield to the floor. Thank you. Further comments, go to Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think in, in conclusion here, I think it's important to recognize that when we go through this exercise again, if we come up with a, if there's a project like the Civic Center that um, everyone knows is going to be funded or plans to fund out of 2012, rather than go through the exercise of sending that $3.5 million through the committee process to be spent in other areas, set it aside in advance so that we don't run into this, uh, this problem in, in the future. Um, I think it's also important to recognize, and I'm, I'm pulling up the, the information for the 20, that was used to decide the 2011 budget. The 2009 1% uh, bed, board, and booze tax uh, revenue was, was just over $3 million. The Civic Center gets 75% of that. The CVB gets the other 25%. Yeah, there's uh, funding available there. I'm sure that we'll, we would hear that um, a lot of that's used for operation and maintenance, but nonetheless, uh, if we're hearing that three to 400,000 is set aside per year for maintenance, um, then some of that money could have been uh, set aside for this. And so perhaps the full request wouldn't have been uh, $3.5 million. What I heard tonight was two things, is that the, the effort to plan for this uh, situation, that there was, there was two things that were in play. One was uh, multiple trips to Washington, D.C. to ask for taxpayer funding federal taxpayer funding for our energy plant, which I'm, I'm not sure I understand the federal significance of, of our energy plant as important as it is. And the other one was simply a plan to come to 2012. Well, if the plan was to come to 2012 all along and, and to simply make every effort possible to move to the front of the line, uh, then what we should have done was shown more deference to the committees and simply uh, taken this $3.5 million out of place so that it wouldn't have created uh, the angst that it has by uh, um, allowing the committees to go through the somewhat frustrating process of, of, of coming up with their recommendations and then being told, well, we're not going to listen to your, uh, to your uh, recommendation. So bottom line is, is we knew that this was an issue. I don't think it's uh, finger pointing uh, to say that uh, this was known to be an issue. There should have been more, uh, more planning uh, over the years. And now we are uh, in a, uh, a difficult uh, spot. I still don't think that we need to spend the $3.5 million tonight. I think we can ask the Civic Center to uh, come up with a, uh, with a better plan. Thank you. We'll go to Dave Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's really been interesting in the last few weeks. I really understand what it must be like to win the lottery because I've gained more new friends. I've had more calls from people that I didn't know that are now my best pals. And I've, I've appreciated some of those new acquaintances. But I've also noticed some really interesting things take place that I don't believe are coincidence in the least. And one of them is this pitting of the Civic Center of the, against another project. I'm offended by it. And I'm not going to deal with that now, but I will at future time. What I am going to deal with now is talking about the energy plant as the energy plant and not dealing with it how it might apply versus one of the other projects that's on the list. Because as was said earlier tonight, they all have merit. It was mentioned earlier that the culture at the Civic Center is simply to come and ask for 2012 money. 
Folks, I am that culture. I spent eight or nine years on the Civic Center board. I was appointed by three different mayors and approved by at least that many councils. I bring that up only because I want to make sure that in difference to some of the people speaking from this dais, I am not trying to sway one way or the other in favor or against the current administration because there were three different administrations that put me in that chair. The culture that was mentioned. The culture that's been developed is every time that Civic Center started to generate any cash on hand, someone came looking for it. Whether it was the mention like was mentioned tonight, that three-fourths of the Triple B comes to the Civic Center with the innuendo that maybe we shouldn't have that much going, that suggestion has been brought in the past whenever money was starting to be accumulated. Whenever it looked as though the Civic Center started to accumulate some cash on hand, the interdepartmental charges went up. In the last three years, there have been over $3 million worth of charges back or fees paid back from the Civic Center to the city, back into the general fund in one fashion or another. In Property tax alone in the last three years, there's been over $400,000. <coughs> Only because the Civic Center is an enterprise fund. Because there are those that feel that it needs to be dealt with differently than any other city department. Now, I don't know where your math goes, but pretty simply, I can see that had that Civic Center not been charged back for the same services that other city departments get as part of their budget, they may not have to be here tonight. But I know the culture of which was mentioned because I know what it was like to be on the other end of that cash on hand, that every time it started to grow, the culture was you better spend it because they're coming looking. That is the culture that the city has trained this civic center. It's wrong, by the way. I'm not condoning it in the least. I'm simply explaining what I've noticed over the years to be true. I compliment Alderman Mason. Jordan, I think the idea of having a capital replacement maintenance fund is awesome. And, and you and I spoke about it earlier. The, it, it isn't the idea of having it for the Civic Center, but rather having it for the city. As Mr. Michaels mentioned, it isn't just the energy plant. There are several major projects. We have lots of things in this city that could fail tomorrow. The difference is most of those projects don't have any funding source of their own. The Civic Center has. I remember the day that, that I got the call from Mr. Maliski that said the main line between the energy plant and the Civic Center failed. It's going to cost us $300,000 to replace it. And by the way, we have no heat. We didn't discuss it very long. We had to do it. But the Civic Center at that time had some cash on hand. It was able to do it. Some of the things that that cash on hand has been used for, keep in mind, this is a 37-year-old building. It's replacing roofs, doors, windows, the kinds of things that you would do to a 37-year-old house that has a million visitors a year. It replaces those every year. Now, folks, when you set aside three or $400,000, that doesn't go very far. We've got to look bigger than that. We've got to look out further into the future. And I think that's really what we need to be looking at on this. But once again, that's a discussion for another time. <coughs> but the question was asked, why didn't we plan ahead? I think the Civic Center's done a great job planning ahead. 
You're not walking in there and finding buckets on the floor with the, with the ceiling leaking because on an ongoing basis, maintenance has continued on. But some things are beyond the ability of that facility to take care of its own needs. Alderman Hadcock mentioned a couple of projects. The Canyon Lake Dam, the airport, the Horace Mann Pool. In every one of those cases, they're basically a maintenance or replacement of an existing <coughs> facility. By the way, those three projects add up to $9.5 million. How is it different? How is one something that we can hold someone accountable for the failure of past councils and the other ones are great valid projects? I struggle with this a lot. It looks like we're trying to point a finger and I agree with Mr. Michael on that. And in closing, I guess I, I will say, obviously, I'm going to support, and for very many reasons, the funding of the energy plant. I'm not saying in lieu of, of supporting something else, I'm simply saying that project needs to be funded. We don't have a choice. What are you gonna do? Let the furnace fail? If you vote no, on funding the energy plant. <clears throat> Please remember, because I'm going to, when the parents from Central High School start calling and telling you that their kids are freezing because the energy plant failed, because we chose to stand on a principle that we didn't fund it, instead of doing the right thing and then moving forward with what we need to do and put together a capital replacement and maintenance fund. We need to fund this project from the funding that we have, the 2012. We need to approve it tonight, and we need to move forward. I yield. Thank you, Dave. We'll go to Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think the point's been made. I'll withdraw my motion. Okay, the motion has been withdrawn. Further discussion on that? Mr. Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the opportunity to visit one more time. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have a spirited debate when it comes to uh, spending money in our community. As we grow as a council and we see the, the cultures that do exist in government itself, uh, we realize that this is no different than the rest of what government does. It's uh, sometimes a, uh, you got to make tough decisions. Sometimes they're... Uh, not always the most exciting decisions to make. Um, and I'm hoping that this leads us to the larger discussion of, uh, of, of, of looking at the end of the future. I think there's been some good comments made in reference to, you know, planning for the future of a capital improvement fund, which is necessary, definitely necessary in the Civic Center when you're looking at, at, at what's staring us in the eye. The, the Civic Center is a competitive business. And I don't know if people around here know that, but Obviously, Sioux Falls is, is looking at expanding their civic center to the tune of this $120, $140 million project they got going there. And when these things happen, it buy, it, they basically buy for the same type of services or the same type of uh, concerts or those venues that they get. And so the one thing that, the, that we have to look at and the council needs to look at, it, our council should look at, so we're not sitting in the audience someday and having the future council going, same thing that we're doing is like saying, hey, guys, you guys didn't, you failed to plan. And there's a lot of that going on, not only in this project, but in several projects. So it's a good conversation to have, and I'm, I'm glad we're having it. And, uh, and again, I'll just reiterate the fact that I'm, I'm going to support this on, on the premises of, I think, uh, funding the Civic Center, getting it, you know, into the, keeping it competitive, getting this thing done without having to raise the prices to the, to the taxpayers. Either way, as, all, as Alderman Hadcock had mentioned, either way, whatever we look at, when we're up here making decisions, what we're doing is spending your money. You people in the audience, us up here, the citizens, the people that we, we represent, we're spending your money. Don't let anybody tell you anything different than that. It's your money, and whether you're buying tickets or you're buying groceries or you're 
paying your property taxes, whatever it has, it's your money, and what we need to do is be good stewards of that money and make good financial decisions. Thank you. Okay, the motion on the floor is to fund $3.5 million for the energy plant. Uh, we do have one other speaker, and that's Bill Watt. Well, yeah, you answered my question. Thank you, Mr. President. So the motion on the floor is to approve the funding of the $3.5 million. Correct. Uh, I would just like everyone to know that I'd be highly in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I see no further requests to speak. So, like I said, the motion on the floor is to approve $3.5 million for the energy plant. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries. Next item, uh, next recommendation is the Skyline Wilderness Park uh, to fund $912,000. Can we have a motion on that for discussion? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve uh, $912,000 for the Sky Skyline Wilderness Park. Discussion on that motion will go to Ron Weifenbach. Mr. Chair, I had mentioned earlier about when I when I uh, moving this project forward, I, I I think that there's room for an opportunity here to to look at some cost savings benefits uh, moving forward. I'm not going to be in favor of this unless we actually look at it and say what we can do in the area of getting a community project going in this city, bringing the community together. This would be a good project for it. Make it in a community project. This this project particularly has a lot of opportunity for um, citizens of our community that want to stand behind this project to put their shovels and their shoes and their back and whatever work it is necessary to make this pro project to fruition. Uh, I, 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 you know, if we could, if there's an opportunity for savings here, then, I, then I'd like to look at that. So. If I have some support from anyone else, I'm, it's too late for me to make a uh, substitute motion, but I would, I would like to see some commitment from the, the community on this particular project to, moving, to uh, move it forward and to look at what we can do to, to get the community involved and bring, bring, bring everybody together to make this thing happen. Thank you, Ron. I, I, uh, I know you were part of the discussion, I believe, that we had with the supporters of this project, and I believe that they have committed that they're going to uh, try and do a lot of the work themselves on this to uh, decrease the cost of their project. And I think they also had made discussions that they were going to also do maintenance on it after it's uh, been constructed. So um, I think we do have that support from the community. Uh, with that, uh, further, you have anything else, Ron? No, Mr. President, I appreciate your comments. And I'm, I'm going to, as long as I'm on this council, I'm going to, when they come looking for that money, I'm going to be, that's the first thing I'm going to say. When, when we're looking at bringing this one, I'm asking, what, what is your commitment? What are you guys doing to make this project move forward? How is your labor going to make this thing work? And I think it's an opportunity, not, not number one, to save money, but also bring the community together. I think it's a, a worthy project to have that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. We'll go to Deb Hadcock. Thank you, Ron. Um, do we own all this land at this time? We yeah, don't. I believe we do, yes. We don't need any easements or anything like that. Did we? We were going to check that before we came to council tonight, see if they needed Duncan, to be. Duncan, you're anything. shaking your head. Have we has the parks department verified that? Or Jerry, Cole. <coughs> Mr. Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the trails are all designed on city property. Uh, they're uh, on the west side of Dinosaur Park. There's possibly going to have to be a request for an easement. There's a right of way there, a city right of way. I don't know how that works, but uh, that that would be the only right of way uh, that we would need. But that is, but it is owned by the city. It, it's a right of way and. Uh, when we looked at it, it was a city right away that goes down on to uh, Mountain View area. So, Ms. Hadcock, other so, questions? So South Street, St. Cloud, Florman, all of those, we have the right of ways, plus we're allowed to legally build parking lots or, or areas for people to park at in those areas without yes. any issue from the neighbors? Gary. Thank you very much. It's, it is all city property where the parking lots are 
um, intended to be correct. I was just remembering when we went through with the last one that they wanted to keep this all natural and they didn't want to put any unnatural stuff in there at the time and now we're putting parking lots and stuff and I, I if that was the intent and that's the need I guess um, I don't I don't know um, I, I'd have to go look up there a little bit closer but um, in one sense I know this is the future um, I did go to Montana and they're making huge parks like this for the future of their city in fact they have built their city around these kind of parks and it has generated millions um, when we had went there and in, in uh, what was it I can't even remember anyway long story short I think this will be good I'm just hoping that they have the right amount of the funding source they have the easements and the things to move forward because the last project we did uh, they came back for more money um, without the foresight of uh, the real cost so I hope this is the real cost and that's all I have to say further comments we'll go to Gary Brown thank you mr. chairman uh, just to follow up to Alderman Weisenbach's uh, question about help and that when they made the presentation here uh, I asked a question uh, that was not very clear to my good friend Tim Rabin whether or not there'd be any help from the runners and the bicyclists and that and did not get a very strong answer all I can tell you is that uh, my PC my phone my cell phone my phone at home is completely overrun with people from those different organizations saying we're going to be there and we're going to help we're going to make sure this thing works there's a lot of people and a lot of kids so uh, I'm expecting a lot of shovels and, and uh, people up there helping and I think that they're going to show up and make this uh, something Rep C is going to be very very proud of so thank you Mr. Chairman thank you Gary go to Eric Costello Thank you very much, and I appreciate those words from uh, Alderman Brown because um, that's, that echoes what I've heard, and that echoes my experience with the groups involved in this. <clears throat> They've put many hours of sweat, sweat equity into many projects in the hills that are miles away from their homes, and I expect equal gusto for this project, which is for all practical purposes in our backyards. Um, I also understand Alderwoman Hadcock's uh, point of view where originally this land was meant to be you know kept in a natural environment um, from my experience through exploring that area the past five years it's become very popular thus the need has come to to manage and focus uh, the access and the impact um, this has been done successfully in areas throughout the nation with equally sensitive land and uh, I, I look forward to seeing uh, this area improved through the funding of this project thank you Thank you, Mr. Costello. The motion on the floor is to uh, approve $912,000 for Skyline Wilderness Park. I see no other requests to speak, so all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item is Black Hills Vision to fund $500,000. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve funding for Black Hills Vision of $500,000. Uh, we do have a speaker request. Request form from Mr. Derby. Mike. Thank you, Mr. President. Mike Derby, Chairman of Black Hills Vision. Just here to uh, stand by for questions. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Mike. Any discussion on the motion? I see no requests to speak. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the Mental Health Collaborative uh, to fund $500,000. We have a motion and a second to approve the Mental Health Collaborative of $500,000. Discussion on that motion. I do have a speaker request for him from Mr. Solano. Alan. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, members of the council. I just, on behalf of the uh, Black Hills Mental Health uh, Collaborative, Wanted to thank uh, both the citizen committee and the council for their uh, uh, consideration of this project and ask for your uh, vote uh, for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Further discussion on the motion on the floor? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Next item 
is the Roosevelt Park Field House uh, funding of three million dollars. We have a motion for discussion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to fund three million dollars to the Roosevelt Park Field House. Discussion on that motion will go to Bonnie Peterson. Okay, thank you very much. I um, I think what I would like to see is a, a substitute, well, let's see how we'd like to do it. I'd like to challenge us to use this opportunity to build uh, the adult resource center first instead of the field house. Uh, we could use the three million um, from um, the field house and a million from the contingency fund or if we think of some other creative way to get the money. Uh, the seniors don't ask much for themselves. Unlike us, they don't expect a lot. They don't like to cause trouble. They're not the ones that we're going to be hearing and getting a lot of phone calls from or emails. Um, I know there is um, wanting both um, Canyon Lake and um, the other senior center to come together, but I think this is a multi-group. Uh, you've heard from the Daisy House. They provide these services, and if they can move into this adult uh, resource center, they'll be able to double uh, the number of people that they can help. And as we are, the boomers are uh, marching forward, and five years is a long time to wait in a senior's uh, life. And you can also saw several examples tonight of younger people that also benefit from these services that otherwise um, their families probably would have to quit work and um, uh, not be able to, you know, to pay their way. So I would encourage you strongly to, to think of ways that we could do this. It's my understanding that the, the Adult Resource Center can be built first and then let the um, Roosevelt part, the field house, come in second in five years. Um, that is what I would like to see, and I hope I get some support on that. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Uh, I'm going to go to J Jerry Cole. Jerry, could you answer the, the question here? Uh, I don't have my sheet, but the original request for, was for around $3.4 or $3.5 million dollars. Somewhere in that area there, was it not, for funding? Um, Wasn't that the original request? The original quest request for the field house was 4.875. Oh, I was a little off. So I guess my question is, is the recommendation is uh, $3 million. Um, can you build something for the $3 million that will work? The $3 million will give, give us probably two gymnasiums, a uh, multi-purpose room, and an indoor playground. Okay. And that will work, <clears throat> correct? Um, yes, that will work. Right. That will still give us space to grow into the field house at a later date. Okay, thank you. We'll go to Sam Quaker. Thank you, Sam. Go to Bill Watt. I'm still a little confused. If if we build the Roosevelt uh, field house at a reduced price of three thousand dollars. Does the size or three million dollars? Does the size of the building, Jerry, shrink down? Jerry, thank you, Mr. President. Um, correct. The size of the building uh, for the original request was for a large a field house, open area, two gymnasiums, a couple multi-purpose rooms, locker rooms, and indoor playground okay it was also my understanding that then by adding on to the field house the adult social center uh, then part of that facility would be used by the adult social center so I guess my question is if we build the Roosevelt uh, field house at what you're uh, saying right now Jerry at three million dollars then I'm a little confused how we could attach the adult social center on it that you're talking about, Bonnie. So. Uh. 
Jerry. Yes, I, I direct the question to Jerry, and if Jerry can't uh, answer, maybe Bonnie can enlighten me a little. I'm just getting a little confused. Uh, I know it's one building if they were both funded and it's a certain size, but by <laughs> sizing down the field house, uh, I, I'm just getting a little confused. Jerry, can you answer that? I, th I think so. The, if the adult social center was built and the $3 million was given for the gymnasium area of the field house, um, the adult uh, the social center could still utilize the gymnasium area, um, hopefully an indoor track, and I forgot to mention that, an indoor elevated track, um, as well as use our fitness classes that we would be putting on in there that we do now and some of our contract classes such as Tai Chi and yoga and those things, they could still come in and utilize those those uh, classes. Okay. I think I got it straight. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. We'll go to Sam Quaker. No? Uh, Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question for Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm a little bit confused because my understanding is, is that between the swimming pool and between the ice hockey rink, uh, when those were originally built, due to the vision of the council at the time, the walls were made to collapse in, in, in and then the building would exist. Is that correct? I mean, how did, when uh, Alderman Wall had asked you the size of the building, do you mean the things that are inside of it or the, or the footprint of the building? Jerry said the size of the building is being shrink, shrunk. Did you mean the footprint of the building, or did you mean, you know, like having offices in the building? I guess there's something I want to make sure I'm clear on that. Jerry. If I might, Mr. President, um, I'll, try, I'll try to explain. I think I understand the question. If, if you think of the open area in between the two buildings as one big area, there's a possibility of putting three different units or buildings in there. One would be the social services, one would be the gymnasium area and the multi-purpose uh, rooms, and one would be the field house area, which is just a large open indoor space that could be done soccer or a lot of different events in there. Um, if you take out the field house and, and the three million dollars allows us to do the gymnasiums, you could still have space to do the resource center um, should it be funded, yes. Do you understand that, Ron? Yeah, a little bit, but I'm, I'm still slightly confused. I got it. Okay. And so basically the, the thing that would be leaving out would be just square footage, I mean. Correct. So the difference in that square footage is a million eight. Yes, which would be the large open area. I mean, so you're you're planning on segregating all three departments with walls in between, or? Yes, I missed that part. The original plan would have been for the gymnasiums and the field house area to be open. But if we only get a certain amount of it, there would be a wall, and what we would do is plan ahead and probably put several garage door openings so when the field house is built at a later date that that space could be utilized together again. Okay. What, what, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. A question for Jerry. Uh, your, your vision for the field house, does that include like, like a... A gymnasium or something or Jerry and I think maybe this is where the confusion is, is getting to a, a field house is is a large open area that you could play indoor soccer or you could have three tennis courts or you could have four volleyball courts it's a multi-purpose area the gymnasium space would just be the wooden gymnasium floors, two, two gymnasiums where you could have basketball, volleyball, and other events on the wooden floors. The field house would be an area where you would have a multi-purpose flooring where you could have a lot of different areas, including 
indoor roller skating, shuffleboard activities, those type of things. Okay. I guess that's what I had envisioned originally, was just having an open area with the track. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Further comments, we'll go to Bonnie Peterson. Thank you. I had another question for Mr. Cole. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Mr. Cole, is it possible to build, if we build the Adult Resource Center first? Because I'm understanding all three of these are different. Um, they don't know how to be built simultaneously. Is that your understanding, or how do you? See this. If we just went in and built the adult senior center here first, then could you come in later with the field house and the gym? Mr. Cole? Um, you could do all of them. You could do one of them. You could do two of them. Uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want in construction management. Okay, thank you. Further comments will go to Deb Hadcock. How much was the Adult Resource Center asking for? Four million. Okay. I guess at this point, um, how much? Uh, hold on a second. Right. How much was it, Pauline? According, according to my notes from the last meeting, it was four point five for the Adult Social Resource Center. So we need four point five for them, or four point eight seven for the field house. Um, so far, I haven't seen a good argument either way. Um, in a sense, um, meaning cash flow and then on both of them. And then the other one with the Adult Resource Center, I see a uh, bigger need. But um, I keep hearing because of the west side or the senior citizen over there, that's what keeps, keeps um, coming back is um, that argument that they're not needed on one side and we're doing one which we're not doing for the other. But um, Right now I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place between those two projects. And I, I'm not willing to do a three million part project on a field house either or a three million part project on an adult resource center. So I don't know if anybody else is thinking this, but um, something needs to come to pass on this a little bit different before I vote on those because I think they're both very good projects, but both are, there's three million dollars it looks like unless we're gonna, we can find contingency of 1.5 or willing to use 1.875. Um, the other thing, Jerry, is, you know I'm gonna ask the question, do you have the current equipment, meaning the boilers, the chillers, and the electrical for a field house or adult resource center to be added with a 50 meter pull? Mr. Cole. Thank you, Mr. President. For the two gymnasiums, and the multi-purpose rooms is my understanding, talking to the engineers, that there is enough capacity to run that building with the resource that we have. If you put a adult resource center on it, that would have to have its own HVAC and energy plant. If you put the larger field house on it, that would have to have its own energy plant. But for the gymnasiums, the multi-purpose rooms, the indoor track, uh, all of that already, my understanding is, talking to the engineers, already exists. So you would build the um, 4.875, the whole project for the field house, but you would need a separate energy plant for that field house? Right, and that's already included in that 4.875. 4.875. I don't know if we can do a substitute and we have to talk about these more, but uh, we need to do uh, something different on these projects. Maybe we can move to the next one and have more discussion on this or continue this in a way that we can have more discussion at a later date. But uh, right now I'm not in favor of doing either until we figure out um, the full amount of how we can do these projects. Thank you. We'll go to Aaron Costello. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, I appreciate that conversation from all the women at Hadcock, and I think that's something we, we should consider. Um, and 
please don't find this out of order, Mr. President. Um, but I, as as intertwined as the Horace Mann discussion is, um, the Roosevelt Park Field House discussion is, and the Adult Resource Center discussion is, it might behoove us to, I hate saying this, but set a separate meeting to, uh, to just discuss those three projects so we can solidly understand how intertwined they are, how they affect each other, and how we could best move forward with uh, the taxpayer dollars that are left here. So I can't make a motion. I too much jibber jabber. But uh, by all means, that motion could be made by someone else. Further discussion, we'll go to Ron Weibach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question for Mr. Green. Go ahead. Um, on Wednesday, this will go to legal and finance. Uh, and Monday, it'll go to the council. Uh, if we have those discussions, as Alderman Costello had alluded to, will that affect the overall 2012 picture? I mean, if we decide that we want to move forward with these other projects and, and then revisit some of these projects to get some more, evidently some of the council people here, including myself, have some more questions, some maybe more pointed questions regarding those projects that are intertwined. Would that slow down the projects that we, if we make a discussion tonight, move it to legal and finance, and then would that overall make a difference, Mr. President? Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. President. The, the council does have the ability to amend the plan after it is adopted. Um, and, and with the 2012 projects in particular, you've got a fair amount of control over how they, um, how they move forward because they've all got to go through the council for authorization to bid and, and contracts and those kinds of things. So, um, you know, with regard to any specific project, I don't think I can answer the question other than to say that the council will make the final decision. Right. I just, I didn't want to keep belaboring this if we thought that we needed some more discussion, and it sounds like we do. And since I've spoken, I cannot make a motion or, I mean, I really haven't spoken on the item. But. Can you make a motion that we put these intertwined projects uh, like Alderman uh, Costello suggested that we meet, I'll get on them later so we can get some of our questions answered and figure out how it's all going to play out. Okay, we have a, I'm taking a substitute motion to, to continue the discussion of uh, the Roosevelt Park Field House, uh, and in that discussion will be a uh, discussion with uh, the adult center and horseman pool. Is that what you're looking at doing? Okay, we have a motion and a second to, con to continue that discussion. The lap pool. Or the lap pool. I, uh, which motion, which one did you want, Bonnie? Well, when I say the Horace Mann pool, still we haven't determined the location or the, of it, so I don't know what else there is to discuss about it. Well, I think every, isn't everything the leisure pool and the lap pool? I mean, we haven't decided exactly. You know, because the you're going to have a smaller leisure pool if you put the lap pool there. So I would think all of it still needs to be discussed. Okay, I, I'm going to assume your motion is to include uh, both the, both the horseman and the lap pool that uh, is projected for down at uh, Roosevelt Park. Discussion on that motion will go to Bill Waugh. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm going to just kind of try to bring this in. Into, into one simple, without confusing myself again. We originally um, had a request for the Roosevelt Park Field House of $4,880,000, the Adult Social Center of $4 million. So I think what the motion is, and, I, and I, if I'm understanding it right, I'm in, in favor of it, because we do, as the city attorney said, we have the, the ability to amend or to adjust to 2012. So we can, we can move forward on what we've approved tonight and uh, uh, come back at some later date and, and add future projects. Uh, we've always had that ability. So. I'm in favor of that motion, and uh, I think we need to give some serious thought to the, to the field house and to the adult social center. And there's been some talk tonight about, a lot of talk tonight, and uh, 
Tonight was the first time that this council person has heard anything about the Daisy House being affiliated with the Adult Social Center. So I think there's been some lack of communications from the collaboration of the current folks supporting the Adult Senior Social, social Center because I don't think all the council members have all the information. And, and there's also been some discussion about the division of the West Side, East Side. Uh, Canyon Lake Senior Citizen Center has a fine facilities on, on the east side, Menelusahan's on the, on, the, on the west side, and Menelusahan on the east side. But I think uh, f for this project to be viable as a social center for seniors in Rapid City, bringing together all these different uh, organizations, uh, all these folks have to come to the table. They all have to sit down, and I don't think it's up to the city council to bring all these organizations together. Uh, but we need some good, firm, strong data on what exactly is going to be the Senior Social Center, what, what's going to be the body of that center, and uh, we need a, a real good business plan because what we don't need is another subsidy from the City of Rapid City to another center of some sort. So I'm in favor of the motion, and uh, uh, I think when we're talking these kinds of dollars, nine point eight million dollars, we need to take some more time on it. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Bill. We'll go to Dave Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. I just have a couple of questions that come to mind with this that and I, I appreciate where Bonnie is coming with this and I, I have no problem in looking at all of these projects together, but I'm a little bit concerned in in the message that we may be sending out to all of the projects that were approved on 816 because the tank pool and the leisure pool, the tank pool for 2.2 million, the leisure pool for 2.3 million were approved right. on 816. Right. As was the YFS kitchen, the Mount Rushmore corridor, the economic development, the airport terminal, the Main Street Square, and the Canyon Lake Dam reconstruction. If we have the opportunity to rediscuss these two pool projects, have we just opened the discussion on all of the other projects, in which case should we be telling Main Street Square not to rebid? Should we be telling YFS to be careful with their reconstruction project on their kitchen because we have the opportunity to go back and reopen any one of these subjects? I, I'm, there's just a, there's a message there that I'm really uncomfortable with, although I have to admit, I was really uncomfortable when we approved them on 816, when we approved half. I mean, you, you can't be a little bit pregnant here. You know, and, you know, on 816, we sent out half a message, and that scared me. And today it's coming back to roost. And, and I think this is something that if we don't learn a lesson from it, we're, we're pretty foolish in it. And <coughs> so I, I think there's a message that we should be careful of. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Further comments? Bonnie Peterson. Hey, thank you, Alderman um, Davis. I just, my intent for the motion was not to, like, reconsider the funding of the Horace Mann pool. It was more for us to discuss the location of the two parts that are still, um, and, you know, exactly how we're going to play that out if we're going to go with the Horace, uh, Horace Mann location or to the Roosevelt Center. So, um, anyway, it's not my intention to reconsider the funding of that particular project that we've already approved, but just the location, which we've said that we're yet to dis decide upon. So, thank you. Further comments, would Deb Hadcock? Um, I have to echo um, Bonnie in, in that issue is that the funding source is still there. My uh, consideration for Horseman Pool um, is that adult resource or field house, again, the energy system, that how that works. Also that um, it's going to cost more money. Not that I'm going to take any funding off of it, but I know at this point Jerry has said it was going to cost more money. So that would be my considerations to make sure we have all our ducks in a row of that funding source and how much all that's going to cost and um, what that all means to that in that centered area. So. I think that's very important for both those uh, entities to figure out uh, and to talk to Jerry on both those issues. 
and also for Jerry to come back, back with somewhat of amount of that leisure pool and that energy funding source to make sure that's all covered um, in any instance. You might have to separate the energy costs in there just so we all know, but long story short, there's a lot of questions in there, but it all comes to one point. It's uh, the location, location, location. So that's, like I said, I don't think we're changing anything and we can move on. Okay, the motion on the floor is to continue the Roosevelt Park Field House uh, discussion, which will then also include the Adult Resource Center and how um, the lap pool and horseman pool all come together, I guess is probably a lack of a better word. But further discussion on that motion to continue? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. ASA softball, $1.2 million. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve $1.2 million for ASA softball. Discussion on that motion uh, will go to Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, I see all the coaches and the kids in the, in the audience tonight. And thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I just, I don't know if this is appropriate, but I, I've been a coach pretty much all my life, uh, softball, basketball. And today, unfortunately, one of my uh, kids that I coached left us, left, left, left uh, Rapid City, it, it passed away this morning. And I see these little kids out here and I see what commitment these coaches have. And uh, I'm here with a heavy heart tonight and I just wanted to say that and I appreciate what all you coaches have done for these kids and understand as they get older and they come back to you and they see what the city's done for them and what kind of kids they will be in the future. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ray Bach. Go to Bill Watt. Thank you, Mr. President. I would just like to say I'm in support of the SA softball fields. Uh, I had the uh, pleasure of uh, visiting the, park, uh, the current softball fields with Alderman Weifenbach and the folks from ASA and uh, Alderman Gary Brown, and, and uh, you know, it, it was eye-opening to go down there and, and see what they have and see what they've done with the four fields that they currently have. Uh, I was very impressed with the maintenance and the, the manicured uh, look of the whole facility. Uh, so what we have given them in the past, they have taken care of for the future, and I was very impressed. Um, I also look back, uh, I've lived in Rapid City for 40 plus years, and I also look back at what we've done for boys baseball in Rapid City and, and the uh, impact that uh, baseball has had on the city of Rapid City. Uh, and then I compare all of our baseball fields with our girls softball fields, and there's not much of a comparison. So I'm strongly in favor of this and uh, encourage my fellow council members to vote for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wild. We'll go to Gary Brown. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, may I ask uh, Rick a question, please? Go ahead. Sorry. Rick, a uh, little confusion on my part in that. I'm a supporter of the project, as you know, on that. But as I remember in your testimony, you gave up there the question, are we going to need more parking and that come up, you know, if adding on these fields? And I recall your answer was no, we're okay on that. But a lot of the emails I got and a few phone calls says, you know, we need that and we need parking because we have trouble finding parking over there. Is parking going to be more of an issue than what I perceived? Go ahead, Rick. Uh, Gary, I think we've, from the get-go, we've included the cost of additional parking. Um, and I think it's all about peak times and peak usage. There are times when parking is, is at a premium at the complex with the, uh, the new tennis courts and the, and the pool and, and the other things that are being built in that area right now. Uh, is, it a, is it an absolute requirement today? No, it's not. But as that area continues to grow, our program continues to grow, the use of the pool and, and the tennis courts and so on. We've not really had a full summer uh, yet with the tennis courts in operation. So that's a little, I mean, some of that's up in the air, but. Does it need to be built today? Is it no? Is it going to need to be addressed in the near future? Yes, it will be, and in the I would say in the near, the short term near future. And what's that your best, what's your best guess on the window? Probably 
three to five years yeah. upon completion of the fields. Um, and just for clarification's sake, the money that we're asking for does include the cost of those of the parking, of the additional parking. How many stalls? I don't remember. Jerry Cole might be able to okay. answer that. There, it was whatever was originally intended to be built at the time the tennis courts were completed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Further comments? We'll go to Deb Hadcock. I'd just like to thank, uh, actually, Ron Weifenbach had moved this and pushed this forward. So um, we all are in favor of this at this point, but Ron Weifenbach, you can, ASA, you can thank him. He pushed and pushed and pushed, and um, we have to thank him, and you guys need to thank him for that because he, he moved this forward. But I still think you ought to name those fields after me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we'll go Dave Davis. Okay. Little Debbie Field. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Deb. <laughs> Hard to be serious. Uh, I, I'm very much in favor of this project, and I guess one of the things that wasn't brought out, but certainly one of the things that I've learned from many of the parents and, and the kids that I have called or emailed is that much like the Skyline Wilderness <coughs> Trail project, these aren't a bunch of takers. These are doers. And their history shows that ASA has had a shovel and a pair of boots. And they've been out there working. And, and I don't want that to go unnoticed that you, you have done it in the past, and I've been told that you're going to do it in the future, and, and it's certainly appreciated. Um, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're addressing the parking because I, too, heard about that. I, I hope that you've got enough in that 1.2, if that's where it goes, to uh, adequately handle it because that, that really has been a concern. So keep up the good work, coaches and girls. Okay, I see no other lights. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to approve $1.2 million for ASA softball. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. All right, that takes us through all the projects. Uh, Jason, my understanding is what we'll need here is uh, a motion to draft a resolution to include uh, the five projects that we uh, approve this evening. Is that correct? That's right. I'd entertain a motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to direct staff to draft a resolution uh, approving uh, the five projects that we approved this evening. And I guess just to let everyone know, uh, with the action that we took tonight, uh, we have at this point in time five million six hundred ninety-three thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars in contingency. With that, uh, discussion on the motion on the floor. Being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second to adjourn? All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, motion carries.